My name is uh, Dr. Stephen K. Wilson. I practiced in California in the United States. My focus of my medical career has always been prosthetic urology, which is the implantation of urinary sphincters for incontinence and penile implants uh, for erectile dysfunction. So how long have you been doing penile implants and how many? Well, I have been around a long time <laughs> and uh, I did my first penile implant 49 years ago wow. in 1974. And it was after I went to a course taught by the guy, Dr. Brantley Scott, who invented the penile prosthesis. Uh, and I did the first one in my state, in the United States. I lived in Arkansas at the time. And I've done 11, more than 11,000 since then and probably have done more than anybody in the world but only because I've lived longer. <laughs> <laughs> then how long have you been doing the training of the penile implant surgery? Well, the, uh, the penile implant and the sphincter, uh, which is the backbone of prosthetic urology, is not often taught in residencies where doctors in training learn uh, to be a doctor uh, or to be a, a specialist. When a doctor finishes his training, if he hasn't been at one of the very few universities where there was a focused uh, prosthetic urologist, he has to learn from going to courses. And so all my life I've taught courses to try to interest young doctors to, uh, to going into this field and sort of subspecializing in it. How many doctors have you been training? Gosh, I, certainly more than a thousand. Wow. Because you, you, it's, you, you can't train them in a big you know, in a big program, you, ha you have to train them small batches at a time because in order to learn how to do this, they have to do it on a body donor uh, and then they have to do it on a patient uh, with someone like me who's done it before, supervising. And so small training facilities are all we can really handle. We typically would do maybe 12 in a, in a course. So why training is important to be the pin prosthetic urology surgeries? It's, it's important because uh, it's not taught in, in the university. And so those of us who are skilled at it and experienced at it, if we don't have courses, the field will die because it won't have any new blood going into it. You, you've been training for a long time and you know how to do it, but you renovated it this yes. time. Yes. Can you explain why? and uh, driving behind it? Yeah, we're trying something new and I hope it works. Uh, you never know until you try it. So we'll ask the students tomorrow to vote and see if they, if they had uh, value out of it. Mm. I have assembled videos and slides and questions for a round table. And so we're gonna have approximately nine to 12 doctors tomorrow. And we're gonna do three cases in the operating room. So two or three doctors will scrub on each case uh, as with the surgeon, mm -hmm. and they will have hands-on watching the surgery. The other doctors will be in the seminar room where I'm going to be playing slides and videos and roundtable discussion for seven hours. Mm -hmm. And so we're calling this immersion in prosthetic urology. And we'll see if the combination of actually going to the operating room laying your hands on the patient as the skilled surgeon does it, plus the immersion of all those videos, slides, and roundtable discussions, if that makes up as good an impression as when we used to show the videos uh, of the live surgery. I think it will, because while an operation takes an hour, hour and a half, the video takes eight minutes because we've cut it down. So we can show five different guys doing the same surgery instead of watching one guy for an hour and a half. And I really believe that this will accomplish the same thing and I'm hopeful that the students will walk away and say it was better than watching somebody because sometimes when you're watching live video, the doctor gets in trouble and then the operation is prolonged mm. and everybody who's watching 
gets up and goes and gets a cup of coffee. <laughs> and so there's much time wasted when you're watching live surgery, particularly if a complication occurs or something. Now, th that's not gonna happen mm. because we just are gonna show video after video after video. Mm. So I'm hopeful that this will be a revolution in teaching of prosthetic urology.